Kuzambo and a very warm welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Shigelson. Our top stories this week. Nine officials received ta from His Majesty the King at the Trashicha Zone. The Cabinet has decided to propose the amendment of all laws empowering the government to grant fiscal incentives as urgent bills in the upcoming Parliament session. And the government to lose 14 billion neutrum in the 12 5 year plan due to implementation of the goods and services tax in India. His Majesty the King granted ta to nine officials at the Tashi Chezong on Monday. They are Trungpin, Ambassador, Zongda, and Armed Force personnel. Sonam Jamso, the Director of Department of Medical Supplies and Health Infrastructure, with the Health Ministry, is appointed as the Wangdi Foda Zongda. Doma Sering was appointed as the new Ambassador of Permanent Mission of Bhutan to the United Nations in New York. She was working as the Director of Multilateral Department with the Foreign Ministry. Sirang Dangpin Duba Dukpa has been appointed as the Dangpin in High Court. Kille Doji, the Dangpin of Criminal Bench with the Thimpu District Court, was also appointed as the Dangpin for the High Court. Thimpu District Court's Dangpin with the Commercial Bench, Pema Rinzin, was also appointed as High Court Dangpin. Pema Wonchu, the Director of Bhutan National Legal Institute, also joins them to become a High Court Dangpin. And in the Armed Forces, Colonel Sonam Topke of Royal Bodyguard was promoted to the rank of Brigadier. Sirang's senior superintendent of police, Lieutenant Colonel Tsewang Rinzin, was promoted to the rank of colonel, and Lieutenant Colonel Wang De Norbu, the officiating deputy chief of police, was also promoted to rank of colonel. For Chiang Adoji, Sunam Pem for BBS News. And on Wednesday, His Majesty the King graced the launch of the Bhutan Foreign Service Program at the Royal Institute for Governance and Strategic Studies or RICS in Pinsaling. It is the eighth leadership program the Institute is unveiling. Treated foreign service officers of varying ranks and responsibilities and serving both at headquarters and mission abroad are attending the inaugural course. The Bhutan Foreign Service Program is a three-week integrated leadership program tailored for Bhutan's foreign service. According to RICS, it offers a combination of knowledge, awareness and skills go to the functions of a foreign service officer and an understanding of organizational change management and policy issues. The program aims to deepen the knowledge and understanding of such officers on pertinent national and international issues. The Royal Institute of Governance and Strategic Studies was established to provide a forum to train both incumbent and potential leaders in all major areas of nation building as envisioned by His Majesty the King. The Institute's first flagship course, the Senior Executive Leadership Program, was launched in 2013. Pemasuki for BBS News. Administrative actions will be taken against 16 employees of the Bhutan Development Bank for failing to shoulder their respective responsibilities to prevent the fraud and embezzlement of 576 million neutrum in Thimphu. This was decided by the bank's board following a letter from the Anti-Corruption Commission. The board decided to withheld promotions and trainings of the officials ranging from six months to three years. The decision was made this week and submitted to the Anti-Corruption Commission today. Some of the concerned bank officials have also appealed against the sanctions decided by the board. If the Commission is not satisfied with the administrative action, the Commission will take necessary action on its own. The ACC's investigation found that project officer allegedly enhanced the loan amount of 55 clients amounting to over half a billion newton. The fraudulent transactions were recorded from 2013 till 2016. The suspect is charged with abuse of function, forgery, passive bribery, deceptive practice and possession of unexplained wealth. The case is being reviewed by the Office of the Attorney General. For Chiang Adoji, Sunampem, PBS News. 
The district court in Samsi gave life imprisonment to the 23-year-old man who raped and murdered a 19-year-old girl in Komtu in March this year. He will also have to pay 120,000 yurtram as compensation to the mother of the deceased. The court passed its judgment on Tuesday. The incident took place on 1st of March. According to the judgment, after meeting online through a fake Facebook account, they decided to meet personally. The convict then raped and strangulated her to death while she tried to shout for help. Gomtu police arrested the man on 10th March after the body was recovered below the Lucky Cement factory. Dalhenge Jungso decided to propose the amendment of all laws empowering the government to grant fiscal incentives as urgent bills in the upcoming session of the parliament. This is to ensure all laws are consistent with the resolution the parliament passed in June to treat fiscal incentives as a money bill. The cabinet will submit a proposal to amend Income Tax Act of the Kingdom of Bhutan 2001, Sales Tax, Customs and Excise Act 2000 and Customs Act 2017. The acts give the Finance Ministry the authority to grant various exemptions and tax holidays to individuals, companies and businesses in the public interest and on satisfactory justifications. According to the Finance Ministry, for a developing economy with limited domestic productive capacity, fiscal incentives play a key role in boosting private sector growth and attracting foreign direct investments. The ministry stated, with the submission of the Fiscal Incentives 2017 as a money bill, the government has paved a way for a parliamentary debate in deciding the fiscal incentives to be granted. <laughs> As per the press release, the Cabinet also requests the Speaker of the Parliament to consider seeking the Supreme Court's interpretation with respect to the issue of fiscal incentives granted before 8 May 2017. <laughs> During the Fiscal Incentives 2010 implemented from 2010 to 2015, the estimated revenue foregone was about 4.9 billion gitam. Similarly, the revenue foregone for the period 1st January 2016 till 7th May 2017 is 1.1 billion yitam. The incentives were announced in line with the economic development policy. The Finance Ministry, as authorized by the Income Tax Act 2001, announced the first set of comprehensive fiscal incentives in the form of tax incentives in 2002 to stimulate private growth and generate employment. With camera person Puptashi, Sonbongdi for BBS News. The much-awaited Tamchu Chuka bypass project achieves a major breakthrough. The formation cutting of the road is finally complete. The Works and Human Settlement Minister visited the site on Tuesday. For the first time in May 16, when the alignment, when the thing was made. The cutting through the hard rock stretch about 3 kilometers near Chuka is now complete. With this, Project Dantak officials said all the routes along Damchuchuka bypass are now connected. However, it will require the completion of two bridges at Tanalumchu and Jantalumchu for the route to open to traffic. Just left with final dressing work, blacktop and all that drain work. But uh, if you consider the whole DC road, DC, this bypass Damchuchuka road, it will be completed once the bridges are through. And uh, we are uh, trying our best 
under the guidance of our chief engineer that the bridges uh, will be through by June next year. As of now, 70% of the works at Chantalumchu Bridge is almost complete, while the bridge of Rotana Lumchu is about 40% complete. During the recent Meet the Press session, the government said the 29.2 km bypass will be complete by June next year. If they deploy laborers, supervisors and machines as required, then it will be complete by June next year. But if they are not able to do so and come up with various excuses, then it will hamper timely completion of the road. Looking at the current progress, we are expecting it to be complete by June next year. The construction of the bypass started in March 2010. Once complete, it will reduce the Timpo Fensling distance by about 20 kilometers. The project is worth over 2.8 billion utem. For Sonom Penjur in Chuka, Pemanamge, BBS News. Three more new species of snails have been discovered by a group of researchers from Bhutan and the Netherlands. Today, Bhutan has over a hundred species of snails. The three new species are Rahula Kleini, Rahula Tronsiensis, and Arhia Wangchuki. Rahula Kleini was collected in 2015 from Mongar at an altitude of 2,300 meters above the sea level. It is small in size, round, and conical. Rahula Tronsiensis is named after the Tronsa Zonkak as the species was found in Tronsa in 2015. It is smaller than Rahula Kleini and conical in shape. Arhia Wangchuki was collected from Thimpu and Wangdifodrang in 2015. This discovery of new species signifies the healthy biodiversity and good quality of water. Another interesting discovery is the addition of a new plant species, Roscoa megalantha. It was collected from eastern Bhutan in 2014 at an elevation of 2,200 meters. The plant has a flower with purple markings in the middle. The study of snails and slugs is a collaborative project initiated about four years ago between National Biodiversity Center, Ugen Wangchu Institute for Conservation and Environmental Research and the Naturalist, a biodiversity center based in the Netherlands. Pasang Doji, PBS News. The Sakteng Wildlife Sanctuary in Tashigang is restoring degraded land and planting bamboos to protect red panda population in the area. Red pandas are endangered species in the world and are found in eastern Himalayan regions. The sustainable rangeland management practices are being implemented to also improve the livelihood of herders in Merak and Sakteng in Trashigang. Sakteng Wildlife Sanctuary recorded about 30 to 35 red pandas in the area since 2010. Five camera traps have been installed in several locations since last year. But so far, not even a single shot of the red panda has been captured. We cannot give a definite answer whether it's increasing or decreasing, but the survey is ongoing and then hopefully after three years completion of the survey, we would be able to come with a concrete number or at least some evidence. We have procured 10 more camera traps and then this year we'll again uh, set up more camera traps. Forestry officials said land degradation caused by landslides and degradation of forest affects the habitats of the red pandas. Over 3,000 bamboo shoots were planted in degraded areas to, to revive the habitat last year. Bamboo is the main staple diet of the pandas during the summer. They also depend on fruits and mushrooms as a supplementary diet. Activities we are carrying out are uh, plantation, fencing, construction of check dams, uh, so that the area gets rehabilitated and uh, the habitat of the red panda is maintained. And we involve local people in doing the work. We don't hire any outsiders. So all the people doing plantation check dams are the local people, herders from Merak. And then so that they feel connected and then they feel like they own red panda. The Sakting Wildlife Sanctuary is constantly educating the herders on the behavior and habitat of panda since they share the same habitat. The three years project is being funded by Darwin Initiative in United Kingdom in collaboration with Charles Sturt University in Australia. For Sring Zamin Tashigang, Sring Dandu, BBS News. Prices of goods imported from India are set to fall after the introduction of the Goods and Services Tax or GST in India. But the government will lose about 14 billion neutrum during the 12th five-year plan. 
the finance ministry shared this to the private sector representatives during a meeting on Friday last week. According to the Director of Revenue and Customs, the prices of top 10 commodities imported from India will fall by 14% on an average. And the consumable goods price is expected to drop by about 5%. But GST will have no impact on the prices of the essential items as it is tax-free. About 78% of the taxes that we collect are from the trading sector on imports. So when the goods prices of goods fall, we are seeing that maybe at the point of entry around uh, the taxes that we will collect or may fall down about 5%. The government is estimated to lose about 12 billion newton from excise duty refund and 2 billion newton from sales and green taxes. But the director said GST will address the informal trade practices across the border. And with the uh, introduction of uh, GST in India, the good thing about GST is everything is electronic. So now you cannot pay cash, uh, taxes in cash. In, uh, you have to route it through a bank account. And the whole system, GSTN, they have called something called the GST network, is automated. So everything has to come through the GST network, which means everybody has to keep records and everything is electronic, meaning that when everything is routed there, electronic declaration payment will be formalized and the informal sector will decrease. And then prices that you, if you purchase anything from those non GST registered or from what we used to call open market, that it will be. Expensive. However, drop in prices of goods and services could lead to increased import and further widen the trade deficit gap. And for the industrialists, although the import of raw materials will become cheaper, exporting the finished products will be expensive as the value added tax for import to India has increased. Prime Minister said, Putin's industries should now be competitive with the raw materials becoming cheaper. <laughs> Chala Kachira Oru Nanke excise Rugi Gekabna Kedi do Tani Tamongo GST Tamongo Godalu Nagita Ochin Goka Bomber Tonchi Sashuni Goka di Lena Malena Natura Chachabi Labaime Nache Saudalu Jungi Chalui Chera Gerdenalu the Chala Zemisugi Chalui Sashuni Regarding the BCCI's recommendation to rationalize Bhutan's tax regime with that of India, Prime Minister said it must go through the Parliament. Prime Minister said the government cannot request exemption of GST exclusively for Bhutan. Koragi company nalu IGST kya hui me? The Koragi jahagi company nalu IGST kya me di? Chhi gekhabi company na IGST yahan se kadbe taani? The ani di the na chigi. Prime Minister assured that the government will pass on the benefits of GST on the imports to the consumers. for BBS News. Fashion industry was relatively a new endeavor until a few decades back. Only a handful of youth were into the business. But today, it has become a passion for Bhutanese women. A group of women, many of whom are housewives, showcase their designs at a fashion show in Thimphu. Trendy coats and contemporary outerwears with a Bhutanese touch. Who says housewives don't have a sense of fashion? Meet these, the first batch of trainees who are earning and making livelihoods while working in the field of their interests, designing. Designing has been, always been my passion, but then I, uh, I was unable to get this kind of opportunity. Uh, this one year course really helped me to uh, gain knowledge about the designing, about patterning, everything. So I hope with the end of this course, I think I'll be able to do something on my own. Uh, and I also look up to my madam so uh, that I can do something like her, be able to help someone. I am a housewife and until now I did not get to experience things like this. The one year training course is really helpful. Now I can design and stitch yata coats on my own which will fetch me good price if I sell it. Their designs, which largely involve giving Bhutanese textiles a Western touch, is a product of the year-long training provided free of cost.
A local designer, Dorothy Guru, trained them to impart the designing skills she acquired over the years. I realize, you know, like this training is very necessary in Bhutan because uh, if the business uh, students or business people have to do the fashion designing course, then they have to go out of Bhutan and then they have to pay so much money, you know, and then some they cannot afford. And especially the uneducated people and then especially the school dropouts, those who don't have work. It's very difficult for them to earn in this, you know, like 21st century and then it's a challenging world. Yesterday's fashion show was a platform to boost confidence and take the skills of the trainees to a whole new level. Sunampem for BBS News. That's all we have for this week. Until next time, this is Sishigelson saying goodbye.